It's good to be with you guys, you know, um, being back and watching, at the, watching the tape. Very tough to look at, fair amount of film that is uh, hard to digest, but all opportunities for us to get better. And uh, I've had really good, instructive talks with the staff, really looking forward to getting with our team uh, this afternoon and then attacking it. What an opportunity to get better and really um, to have a week that we can really lay out who we are and what we're about and, and how we handle or how we respond to adversity. So looking forward to it. Any questions? Yeah, Dave, uh, West Virginia's put up some really good defensive numbers. Are they similar at all to Oklahoma State defensively? Or? I think there is some structural similarities. I think there's we use the term spinner for um, three-man fronts with a linebacker defensive end type body, right, kind of in at the heel line of the defensive line in one of the B gaps and stunts and pressures that can come off of those looks. So they're similar from that perspective. I think they're also similar in that they're very uh, multiple. Uh, they're not, um, you know, a bend but don't break defense. They're they're more of an attacking brand. I think, um, you know, there's some differences just in West Virginia from last year to this. I thought last year there was, there's probably more individual production at all three levels, D-line, linebacker, and DBs, where now there's, there's not quite as much, but there's more team defense with them now. I think I feel like they're, they're, um, they're, they're probably better coached. They're, there's a lot, a lot of technique on film. A lot of um, uh, a lot of discipline, gap controls on tape. Whereas I think at last last year there was a lot of disruption, a lot of I think he's fitting here, but he's making a play over there, and um, you know it creates challenges for us for sure. You know in the run game they are very disruptive. What do you have to do maybe offensively to, to get to a more consistent level? I think we have to be able to. Um, you know, establish the run. If we're getting safeties that are in the box, right, as much as we were on Saturday, right, I think we've got to be more effective at cracking them. You know, we push crack. We have to um, execute that in a, in a much more um, um, uh, uh, much more meaningful way. And then we're also going to have to build a complete balls down the field to stretch defenses to where they can't have, you know, seven, nine, 10 man fronts. Kalen Barnes didn't participate on Saturday. Was he available and what's his status now? He was not. We're, we're aiming to have him available for this Saturday. You know, I think these next two days, uh, Monday and Tuesday, is going to be a big tell on that. He's getting some, um, some work done on, on his legs to see if he can be available for us. Dave, uh, you had three interceptions the other day of Spencer Sanders. Uh, you know, defense has had a fair amount of takeaways all season long. Are you liking what you're seeing from that group in terms of not just getting stops but getting the ball away? You know, I think there's positives. I think, um, and we've talked about this, I believe, some before. I think we've got some guys on that side of the ball that have um, the ability to to make big plays. Um, a couple guys now consistently have done it throughout the year. I think the challenge there for us still is to play team defense and to to really execute our 111th within a within a defensive call, within a package, within a situation. You look at the last two weeks, the first drive of the game um, was probably per, for the opponent their easiest drive, and then you look at you know uh, last so Saturday for example the drive before the half and then at the drive at the end of the game so probably the most stressful and maybe most anxiety filled three parts of the game were when we were at our worst and so to have the ability to play team defense from the start and when it matters most I think is still something that we need to do and will really be able to put us at another level from where we're at now. Dave you seem to, to be kind of edgy a little bit in the post game, which is fine because you lost. But is it time, in a way, are you almost of that mentality? It was time to take off the diapers. We got to go do some things right and get it done. Well, you know, I think, um, yeah, it's it's. I think it's it's it is frustrating for me when 
you know, you want to win with character when you really care about winning is, is, is very important to me, but how you win is more so. And to make that a real central part of what we want to be about and what we want to um, display on and off the field. And then to have, and to, you know, to make that almost a daily point and to have that not reflect and have that not show up is, um, is frustrating. And so usually, you know, you emphasize um, something and you get it. And so, you know, we're, we're talking about staff-wise about ways that we can be more effective in that area and be able to get, um, get a, a complete, um, complete buy-in to where we can be better with that. Because I, I just feel, you know, every game is going to be, you know, a back and forth. Every game is going to be a fight in this league, and rightfully so. And um, we're going to have our hands full playing one opponent as, you know, we've been playing two here for a while. Did, when it comes to pre-snap penalties as far as delayed games or timeouts of the shot with the clock running down, mm -hmm. you know, where's the disconnect there with getting the play in and getting it in on time? Yeah, I think um, as a coaching staff, myself, like I take responsibility for that. That's something we, c we should be much better at. You know, I think the, the crowd noise, I think uh, late in the game, um, the pressure kind of, kind of, um, um, uh, you know, the, the, the time of the game, the time that was left, the score, I think all of those things affected, you know, we would be calling guys, guys wouldn't hear us, hey, this is the call, you know, are you sure that's the call, is this the, and all that was happening up and just, you know, I think pressure creates abnormal behavior and so we were able to really be in a pressured situation really for the first time in um in in an environment in a way environment like that and so very instructive very difficult to look at but um a lot of opportunity to get better at and so that is completely the idea here dave uh, drew estrada made a really big contribution in the last game what do you like about him, what he brings to the receiving core? I think there's a, a real strong competitiveness with him. I think there's a really strong maturity with him. I think um, his work ethic is really strong. I think his, um, there's, a, there's a toughness to him. And so um, he can be a blocker as well as a receiver and a runner. And so there's a great flexibility to him. And I think you know, his care factor is very strong. And so um, we're going to see more and more of him. You know, I think the key for him is to stay healthy. David, I know you look one week at a time, one game at a time, but you have this stretch here coming up of three home games in four weeks. Mm -hmm. How much, you know, how big is this for you guys and then I guess for the fans too to be able to make an impact in that stretch? We're excited for the fans for this next one for sure. I know, you know, in, um, in looking ahead to this week, just seeing – the opportunity for us to build a put a game together, right? To start off a game fast and then to um, to close out, you know, the the first half strong, um, and then to close out the game strong, and to do it with a um, with a real strong energy and a real strong competitive maturity. You know, when we get into those pressured situations and those tough moments, to be at our best. I think those are things that. Um, you know, we've been really working on and, and are really looking forward to showing. And would love to be able to have a, a crowd there that can energize us. I know for our, for our players, to be able to play in front of a home crowd is something they look forward to. Dave, now that you've had the chance to sit down and look at the film, where do you attribute the struggles in the running game? Was it more something they were doing defensively or just a lack of execution? And how much of that is fixable in a week of practice? Yeah, I think it's all very fixable. I think um, there is there is a lot of um, you know. I think um, defensively, and we spoke to this I think last week when we met, just a lot of respect for their defensive coordinator. And I think you know um, he put a lot of people in the box and forced us to um, to win on the outside and on the perimeter, and um, we failed to do that. And so I think once that happens. Then there's really limited um, there's limited things you can do when you're outnumbered in a box, and so I think you know in terms of running the ball, cracking that that eighth or ninth guy, 
and being um, real effective at that is key. I think, you know, uh, getting uh, the balls on the perimeter when if everyone's inside, then try to take advantage of the math outside. We've got to be able to effectively block on that perimeter for that to happen. And then I think the um, the big takeaway though is to f uh, not allow people to do that by having them to uh, feel threatened on the perimeter on the outside in the throwing game. Do you guys have kind of a some break glass in case of emergency looks? You know, I mean, just when when running is not working, mm -hmm. and then maybe that affects the play action pass. Do you have some some other looks that you go, well, let's let's try this. Well, the play action pass really should be it. And there was a few examples, I think, in that first half where, you know, if we come down with it, I think that really changes a fair amount of things because uh, I think that opens stuff up. And I think, you know, in the second half, starting in that third quarter, it opened up after we, we were able to connect on one of those passes, the run game immediately after, all of a sudden showed up. And so it's kind of time tested you know, that. And so I think that's the main one. I think some of the screens that we had, you know, we've got to build block better on the perimeter. And then I think some of, you know, in the second half, you saw some of the empty sets where we can ID better w what coverage and what pressure. And I think you saw some of that to start the third quarter. Dave, obviously there's emphasis on going 1-0 every week, but as you look further down the schedule, I mean, does this feel like a make or break point in the season when it comes to the game Saturday? I, I wouldn't use that language. I would use it more of, um, you know, it's a game of random events, game of setbacks. How do we respond to it? You know, it's something that we talk about a fair amount. And I think it's, it's one thing to nod your head and, and kind of understand it when we're sitting down. But to be in it and to give your all to something and then to have that not be enough and to make maybe a, a critical mistake here or to um, overlook something there, take ownership of it, and then put yourself out there again. That's what this week would be about. Dave, they've got a veteran uh, quarterback, running back. What do you see from those guys? Quarterback is savvy. I think he, um, the receiver core is very impressive. And I think um, you know, they'll, they'll take the fade balls. There's a fair amount of all goes. So they'll throw it up, um, I think. Their slot receiver is one of the, the, the better slot receivers we've seen this, this far. He might be the best to this date. I think um, um, the quarterback has uh, limited ability to move in the pocket, but knows where he's getting, knows where he's going to put the ball. And so his decision making and his processing is pretty impressive. Um, then I think the running back is, is physical. You know, they're, um, they're a duo play scheme. A lot of double teams at the point of attack with the offensive line, and the running back is patient and physical to where he could hit it downhill or he can bounce it, right, if you're building a wall in the correct manner. And so I think offensively, um, you know, I, I know that there's been some challenging games, but they've got the pieces. And, I'm, you know, they're looking to get everything kind of clicking. Um, and uh, we want them to wait another week for that to happen. Dave, where did the philosophy of using defensive guys at fullback come from? And, and Dylan just seems like an ideal kind of guy for that. Yeah, well, we don't, um, you know, there wasn't a bunch of fullbacks on the roster. And I think, you know, Dylan um, has that ability to, um, to dig people out and, you know, uh, fill a B gap or get on the perimeter in a C or D gap and then run and lift an, an off, uh, offender and move them back. And so I think, you know, his ability to play with leverage in those areas. And then I think he also has a, um, you know, a lot of linebacker is, is running to daylight, which um, running backs do a, uh, quite a bit amount of themselves. And so I think that, that has helped him in terms of when there is traffic, finding a seam, and he's been right on it. And so um, I know he enjoys the call for sure. We're, we never have to look hard to find him. I might have missed it. Do you expect Bernard back this week? All, all points to him coming back. And so we're going to uh, see a little bit of him today. We have a practice later on today. And so some of his reps will be limited. And then I'm sure tomorrow will be limited as well. But we're anticipating having him. You mentioned it's a game of setbacks. Uh, uh, I mean, that's football. Mm -hmm. um, 
no no coach wants to lose, but does a part of you as a coach sort of relish the challenge of this week to see if the guys come out with the right energy and it's kind of that, hey, let's see what you're made of sort of mindset? Well, you know, a game of random events, a game of setbacks, I would say that life is like that too. And then, you know, I would rather win than lose. Uh, but then I think – when you have when you have a team that's believing and you have a team that cares about each other and is invested in each other right when you can be re real about what's real i think after we may have mentioned this last week but after every you know saturday game you know you're on sunday or monday you've got yourself a brand new team and so based upon saturday's events and the feelings and the emotions and the decisions and the consequences and all of it to be real with what's real and to come together and to put it all out there again, right? That's, that's something that to this state we have not done yet. You know, we've, you know, it was like, we can look at last year and I think last year is difficult because it's, it's, it's hard to push people when you're afraid of losing people, right? And just the situation last year with myself and the, the, the setup of it and everything else. And so this is an entirely uh, probably more normal or a uh, different setup than that. And so um, to be able to push people f so that they can see what we see as coaches is, um, is the challenge this week. You see and you hear about players eventually watch the film. They can tell whether they've done something. What, how are the coaches after a game like Saturday? What was that room like? Yeah, very reflective, uh, very disappointed, very, um, very hard on themselves. And a lot of my meetings with them yesterday was that way. I think, you know, make sure on, um, on Sundays to kind of clean the day to where I'm, I watch all the special teams reps with our, our coordinator. I watch all of the offensive reps with the offensive staff and then watch all of the defensive reps with the defensive staff. And the reason for that is so that nothing um, kind of slips by, nothing sneaks through. Right, um, and you know the the film doesn't lie, and so the op you know the timeouts to protect you know the clock running out or the twelve guys on the field those are just inexcusable. And so I, you know, I put myself as a um, um, as um, the first one up that can do better in that area, and so um, for us to all see it and look at it and and own it. I think was a big thing.